back in the M235i. It's a great day today. 62 degrees. So, I wanted to talk about Carvana. There's a lot of, maybe there could be misinformation online about this company. And I just wanted to say my experience using them. First, let's get a little, see if we can get a little bit of a pull in. I've been researching a vehicle to purchase for quite some time, uh, maybe about three or four months. <laughs> There's those burbles. And uh, I, I've been looking at a lot of different vehicles. Um, I, I was looking at uh, this car, C63 AMG. I mean, really, any car for me, the biggest thing was mostly just horsepower initially. I was looking for the most horsepower. Let's get on this. Let's get on this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it gets moving. Uh, all wheel drive models, so it's really good traction. I wanted four seats. So those were the, pretty much the parameters for me. I needed. Know, front and rear seats and I started to lean more towards all-wheel drive because eventually at some point if I want to put power into this car that all-wheel drive platform is gonna really help so once you start thinking about that for you know four seats all-wheel drive performance cars then it puts you into like you know Audis Subarus vehicles like that maybe even the you know the Golf R uh, it's not a jaw dropper on the street um, so, look at this guy driving like an asshole, man, in a Toyota Camry. I, I never understand people. You, you come flying past me going 100 miles an hour in, in your beat-up Toyota Camry. And I don't mean if anybody, but you shouldn't be flying that fast. You don't have anywhere else to go, okay? I mean, it's dude, it's, it's embarrassing. Your, your hubcap's about to fly off. You're flying around here doing 100 on the highway. It's people like that, man. But anyway, back to what we were saying. Uh, yeah, so I, I wanted more speed, and, and, and I think the Subarus are quite boring, so I didn't want to get up to Subaru. And so then I started looking at the Audis. Uh, and I, and I, had, I had my, my eyes set really on the Audis. I, I thought for sure I was probably gonna get one. I was looking at the RS3 models. Um, so just a, a, an RS3 or maybe even a, a TTRS. That was the model I really settled on. And I really wanted a TTR, TTRS. I, I thought the car looked beautiful. I like the curvature of it. Cool two doors, Audi, all wheel drive, quad, quattro. And it's very, very fast. It, you know, and 300 horsepower of that um, turbo four cylinder, which is, you know, that's, that's a feat all in itself. It's me to get that much power out of it. And it's all wheel drive, and you can tune them. Or actually, I'm sorry, I think it's a five-cylinder engine, correct me, not four-cylinder, it's a five-cylinder engine, which they say is derived from, like, Lamborghini and, you know, stuff like that, you know, who knows, but it's a, it's a great engine, and, but the thing with the RS3s or the TTRS is that that was at the higher end of my budget, so we can look at it. other BMW owners I you know I actually use my turn signals so but I understand why they don't because these turn signals are very weird if if you don't know how to correctly use them then you'll be toggling up and back and forth and it's kind of annoying but so it's just sometimes easier just not to use them yeah but yeah so it's so the TTRS but then uh, I couldn't really find one within my budget so then I was gonna go RS3 which you know similar engine but the platform is a little bit different. Uh, you know, you have a sedan versus a, a coupe. Um, and so 
So I ended up, you know, researching. I remember when this car came out, the M235i, I was head over heels for it. And then when I realized they had an all-wheel drive model, and this all-wheel drive model is faster than the rear-wheel drive. I, you know, to me, it was a no-brainer. This is a great car, good balance. It's a, it's a good balance in between. You have premium, uh, the, the premium cabin, beige, you know, blind, blind, um, you have uh, lane departure and, and assistance, and you know you get all the amenities from that. And this was a really good spec one. You know, heated seats, the in performance the steering wheel, in performance exhaust, and uh, it's you know really well spec. And it's a beautiful car. It's very low mileage. As you can see, it's very nice and clean. And it's, it's a great purchase. So I ended up settling on this car, and I remember I was researching on Carvana's website this model. And surprisingly enough, they had they had a couple of them, which I was shocked because I didn't even know they you know they sold performance cars. I thought it was just the basic cars, and they had it at a really good price. And so from there, I kind of zeroed my eyes on it, and from there, I just set up financing and you know make sure I had all my all my um, all my you know I had a I had a good amount of savings that I had been saving, so I was able to put a you know a decent amount down. And then with Carvana, which is cool because you can finance through them. Uh, so I did the whole pre-qualify. You can do a pre-qualification online. So just put in your information and then they'll tell you like how much vehicle you could buy, how much they're they're going to finance you and at what rates. You can figure out your rates too. So I looked up the car. It was within my range. And to me, it was a no-brainer. Now, on their website, once you go through it, they, they list like all the imperfections. Maybe I'll kind of put in and show the app or um, show you what it looks like but they list uh, all like the imperfections of the vehicle and stuff like that every dent every scratch and then they have a, a full pictures on the app it's very very convenient and so you were able to get a pretty good insight but still initially I was pretty skeptical because I'm thinking well you know you're still buying a car sight unseen because they're an online dealer so you know wherever you buy it they'll just ship it to you through either those kiosk locations you pick them up or they could even deliver to your address. I decided to pick it up at the, the vending machine, which you know, that may have, may have been a mistake as well, which we'll get into. Um, but so, set up financing, uh, you know, I, I was approved and then they started the process. Now it took, I think about three days from the time that I had put in my offer and they were reviewing like my paperwork my finances because you, you're gonna have to upload some documents you know you you'll probably have to upload you know your driver's license they might even ask for pay stubs for income verification and stuff like that so after you upload that after about three days they're gonna say for sure they say they're gonna tell you that hey you got the car you were approved for it and then they'll tell you your terms and stuff like that uh, and then from there, then you start getting messages saying, hey, we're preparing your vehicle for shipment. And then they actually give you a tracking so you can see like when your vehicle is on the process of you know nearing your location, you'll see a little tracking device like, hey, your, your vehicle's in this state and so and so. That's, it's really cool and convenient. Um, so overall, that process was pretty seamless. Now, some of the issues started arising once the vehicle arrived. And I know for some people they have issues with like late deliveries and stuff like that. I never had that issue personally um, or delayed shipping or anything like that. Mine came on time. My issue was, well, once the car, the vehicle came and I went to go pick it up, uh, I went after I arrived to the facility. Well, first off, I was waiting there for like 10 minutes before anybody even said anything. But I'm like, whatever. I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal. But, you know, I'm waiting here for... You know 10 15 minutes no one's in the front office finally a woman comes and you know i tell her i'm ready to get my vehicle so she gets my vehicle and she gives me a point to put inside the slot machine and, the, and then you can watch from inside and your cars can come out of the machine come down this conveyor belt and it's going to be brought into a bay one of the bay areas for you so i went ahead and did that put my coin in and i'm sitting there and i'm watching on the vehicle i'm watching on the screen my vehicle and sure enough the car like starts to come off from you know from the vending machine it's vending machine location and it just stops midair and i kind of knew something was up the woman starts running back and forth and she's like oh yeah it got stuck no worries we'll just we'll just reset it i'm like okay whatever you know i know things happen 
Uh, so then she comes out, she gives me another coin. Now, at this point, it took her about, probably about a good 15 minutes for them to figure out what was going on with the machine and they finally fixed it and they put the car back so they can like redo it again so I could, you know, have that experience. Yeah, so they 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 put the car back and you know gave me another coin to try again. I put it in the machine again and then second time they're trying to bring it down, it gets halfway out and boom it jams up. The machine just locks up and they can't get it. So at this point I'm kinda like, okay, this is kind of frustrating because I have a place to, I have somewhere else to be in an hour and it's gotten stuck now. And so she fixes it again and she brings me another coin for the third time and I just tell her at this point I just say ma'am you know I, I I told her I said hey look I just need the car at this point I have to go it's been an hour I've been here for an hour and you know I'm going to be late so she's like oh, okay 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 but then just proceeds to go ahead and just does it anyway so then I'm waiting it takes another 15 minutes and then finally the machine works and it brings the car down so I was like okay this is kind of not a good sign you know first day you pick up a car you can't even get it off the machine but thankfully they got it down now when i seen the car um, my initial response was it, it looked pretty it looked pretty mint um, it was pretty accurate to the presentation the issue i seen was i think one of my wheels maybe my left rear wheel it had some about a maybe a half inch of um road rash on one of the rims which you know would have to be repairs that they didn't state but overall you know the car is 20,000 miles so I, I wasn't gonna you know it is a used vehicle I wasn't gonna put up a major major fuss about that my concern was getting the car mechanically checked and things of that nature uh, so everything checked out after I picked up the vehicle process was easy signed some paperwork oh and that was another thing too then they told me to to check the registration paperwork and make sure that it matches and sure enough my whole address was like all whacked up it was it wasn't even close it was like someone else's address so good thing i checked the paperwork there so then she had to go back you know it took her like 10 minutes to change the paperwork came back signed the, the paperwork as well so that everything was good i got the paperwork i got the car um you know i took it home and my plan was to get it inspected at bmw but uh, but I ended up choosing some else to take it, and then later back to BMW, which was you know a issue all in of itself. But yeah, so that was my experience with Carvana, you know, roughly. And now we can we can go through the how how it went the next couple of days, how my inspection went in the vehicle quality. But the vehicle was pretty much on par with what what they said. It was a really good vehicle. Um, I took it to initially to Pet Boys to get an inspection, which again I would ne never recommend. But they use Silver Rock, and Silver Rock they they predominantly want you to try to go through Pet Boys first, and then BMW also used the warranty group Silver Rock as well. So that's the war Silver Rock is the warranty group that Carvana uses. So they first would want you to go through Pet Boys, and then second BMW. Um, but I took it to Pet Boys because I wanted to get an oil change and I just got an inspection done and I paid about 300 bucks oil change and I went ahead and changed the brake fluid even though it really didn't need it. You know, now I just realized what the car was saying, hey, brake fluid service. So I went ahead and changed it, but realistically the brake fluid was probably fine. It just needed to be reset. Um, but I went ahead and changed it anyway. And that was an experience because Pet Boys, I was standing in line for like 15 or 20 minutes and they couldn't even figure out you know what oil filter and what oil and, and find the right oil for me those downshift those burbles <laughs> so we can get a little bit of a pull in yeah so uh that, that's going to be a story for another day but uh the car checked out pretty good you know what they said was great so carvana is not a scam um, I wanted to make this video really educate people. So really, it, it can be a really good service. It, it is hit or miss, right? But you got to be able to vet your cars properly. For this one, this was a very, very low mileage car. It's a 2016 model, but you wouldn't know from the, the looks of it, the interior. It only has 20,000 miles. So 20,000 
for 2016 is really really good uh, the car came from it was a fleet company vehicle um, down there it came from Montana so it came down there from you know the, the colder states and I live in you know southern southern hemisphere so uh, but overall my buying experience was great I would recommend them um, they they definitely stand behind their warranty work if you have any issues and concerns because I actually did end up having to do a warranty claim on the vehicle after I got it inspected to um, from Pet Boys they had said that my CV axle was weeping or was leaking and really it's weeping which just means because it's just an older rubber boot and it was just weeping it wasn't leaking and I took it to BMW after that and they confirmed it um, that it was weeping and they put in a claim for me and the BMW said that they would handle it with uh, no issues brought it in that day got it back the same day they replaced it it was all covered under warranty through Carvana's limited warranty because initially when you buy the car you have uh, I think a 5,000 mile or 100 days whichever comes for limited warranty that covers pretty much most of everything except <clears throat> basic wear parts like brakes rotors stuff like that you get you're gonna get that mandatory in every car you buy but I actually purchased an extended warranty a uh, full mechanical warranty that covers all the drivetrain motor transmission um, all the things like that the major parts that can blow out. and I got that for five years which which added it, of course it added on and I added it on to the, the back end value that back end total so uh, so it was finance which I really didn't want to do I wanted to pet separate but it just kind of played out that way but we can go through the numbers and I'll show you kind of how uh, you know the numbers and then the different warranty options because they from what I've told they stand by their warranties and if you get it through them they, they're not gonna like deny claims and stuff like that uh, they really stood by once BMW caught them they, they had no problem they replaced it the CV axle in the car that was it the car was mint condition that's all it really needed uh, no other issues so that was my experience with them and uh, like I said I hope you guys enjoyed this video I got more videos on the way of this car